Hello grade 12 students. In this lecture, I'm going to revise what we have already learned in class about logarithmic functions. So first of all, uh, we explained what's the meaning of len, which is the logarithmic function. We said that uh, len, it's a positive function. Its domain is from zero to plus infinity. And you have to always know that len1 equals to 0. Okay? So pay attention. len1 equals 0. From 0 to plus infinity, len x, it's the primitive of 1 over x. So the derivative of len x is 1 over x. len is a continuous function over this interval. And we have, for every x is positive, len x, the derivative of ln x is also positive. So that's why ln is a strictly increasing function over 0 to plus infinity. The sign of ln x is given by the following table. So as we discussed in class, ln x is positive for x belongs to 1 to plus infinity, ln x equals to 0 specifically at x equals 1, and between 0 and 1, ln x is negative. Now we're going to learn some properties about len. You have to know first the logarithm of a product. So if you have len AB, it's equal to len A plus len B, where A and B, of course, they are positive values. For example, if we have len X plus len X minus 3, the first thing you have to do is to take condition. You have to tell me that X is greater than 0, and x minus 3 also should be greater than 0, so x is greater than 3. So if x is greater than 0 and x is greater than 3, and if, first of all, you have to do this condition before start solving. So len x plus len x minus 3, it, it, this applies this rule. So we can combine those two as multiplication. So the answer is len x into x minus 3. So why do I combine them? Because len a plus len b is equal to len ab as len ab equals len a plus len b. So the final answer is len x squared minus 3x. Now the logarithm of a quotient. So if you have len a over b, it's equal to len a minus len b. Of course, a and b are positive values. So for example, or in particular, if you have len 1 over b, it's equal to len 1 minus len b, which is equal to minus len b. Why? Because len 1 is 0, so you got minus len b. So those are the two important properties for len, the logarithm of a product and logarithm of a quotient. Let us continue. The logarithm of a power. So if you have len a to the power p is equal to p len a. I'm going to give you a specific example. Like for example, if you have len x squared, it's the same as 2 len x. So pay attention. Len x squared is equal to 2 len x. So the, the power, it comes down before the len, 2 len x. And also if you have 2 len x, you can make it len x squared. And len radical a equals half len a. Why? Because radical a, it's the same as len a to the power half. You know that radical is power half. So that now the half is an exponent. It's a power. So we take it at the beginning. So it's half len a. Okay? So you have to study this. If we have len a r equals r len a. So we learned three important properties. Let us take some important examples. If we have len 2.15 to the power 7, it's equal to 7 len 2.15. So the 7 is an exponent. That's why we take it at the beginning. So we put it at the beginning, 7 len 2.15. And if we have len 5 plus half len a, minus 3 len x. The first thing you have to do is to take condition for the x. So x is positive. Now, first of all, I'm going to work with half len 8. Half len 8 is written as len radical 8. We explained already why. 
Now, uh, 3 ln x, we can take the 3 as a power, so it's ln x cubed. Now, we have ln 5 plus ln radical 8 minus ln x cubed. So, uh, the first two, they apply the product uh, property, so we can write it ln 5 radical 8. And here we have minus, so we have the quotient property, so ln 5 radical 8 over x cubed, so the final answer is ln 10 radical 2 over x cubed. Now, uh, equal equalities and inequalities. You have to know that if ln a equals ln b, then definitely a is equal to b. If ln a is greater than ln b, then definitely a is greater than b. And if you have ln a less than ln b, it's a less than b. So every time you have ln both sides, you can get rid of them, but you have to pay attention that you should have one ln to the left and one ln to the right. Example, if I have ln x plus ln x plus 2 equals ln 3, I, I should have one ln to the left and one ln to the right. Ln x plus ln x plus 2, they apply the product property. So you combine them together. So what do you get? Ln x into x plus 2 equals ln 3. Okay? So in this case, you have ln x into x plus 2 equals ln 3. Now you can cross out the two lens because you have one length to the left and one length to the left, to the right. So you get x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals to 0. This is, you can solve it delta and root using the delta and roots. So you have two roots, 1 and minus 3. In this case, only the accepted value is 1. Why? Because as I told you before, you have to pay attention to take conditions. You have to tell me that x is positive and x should be greater than uh, minus 2, because x plus 2 is positive, x should be greater than minus 2. So x should be greater than minus 2 and x should be greater than 0. The final uh, condition is x greater than minus 2. We have minus 3, so this, this is a rejected value. Okay, so to take condition at the beginning is very important to decide the accepted uh, values, okay? Another example, we have ln x plus ln x plus 2 greater than ln 3. The same concept, you're going to take conditions, okay? And now you have the same thing, but here you have to do a table. Do you still remember how do we do, we do a table? We put uh, the two roots that are 1. Okay, we have here two roots, 1 and minus, sorry, minus 3. Sorry, and 1. Okay, so... Uh, here, I'm talking here, so we have here two roots, minus 3 and 1, inside the root opposite sign of A, so we have plus, minus, plus, and I need it positive, so minus infinity, minus 3, then 1, 2, plus infinity, okay? Uh, now, 